All right, sorry, so we left off on 61. So the quadrant, so it's asking me what is point C on. Uh, the way that you number your quadrants is you start on your top right-hand corner. Um, this is quadrant number one. This is quadrant number two. And we move in a we move in a counterclockwise direction, which means we go this way. Uh, so if this is one, that makes this two. This would be then three. And then this is four. Um, so it looks like C is in quadrant 3, so we would just go ahead and say quadrant 3. Coordinates, uh, sorry, coordinates of point B are blank. Um, so this time they're asking for my coordinates, which basically means what is the point, what is point B at? Um, so to figure out where point B is, we start at our origin, which is 0, 0. It looks like I would have to go over 1, 2. So my x value is 2, and then I would have to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to get to b, so 2, negative 5. And that's my coordinates for point b, 2, negative 5. All right, 62. It says a concert provider noticed the more expensive concert tickets were, the more they sold. Uh, choose the graph that best illustrates the owner's findings. Um, so we're basically uh, it's saying this, so the more expensive, so as the price increases, so as price goes up, uh, the more they sold, so ticket sales also increase. So we're looking for a line that has price increasing and ticket increasing. Well, if both things are increasing, then it should do that. Um, so we look for that line, that line is going to be D. Right, so the way that you would actually kind of look at this is you just kind of assign a value here. So we could say, okay, if that's five dollars, then let's say ten tickets get sold. Um, let's say, okay, that's ten dollars. I trace that up. That means that twenty tickets are sold um, at twenty tickets, or sorry, at price twenty. And again, I can keep tracing it up, and you can see how as my price increases, my ticket sales also increase. None of these other graphs give me that. All right, next 63, it says the segments graph below has which of the following ranges? Uh, so we're going into range. Um, so the way you want to think about range is you want to think about measuring this line with this ruler, so using your y-axis as a ruler. So measuring it uh, using your y-axis. So how tall is this line? Um, remember that when we talk about range, um, I don't know how your teachers are approaching this but I go ahead and say robot dealer um, so robot dealer that sort of helps you understand which is which and how to solve uh, so in this case since we're talking about range we use robot uh, so robot stands for robot that's my range and that's bottom to top um, so we basically start from the bottom and go to the top. Uh, so I want to measure my line from top to bottom, or sorry, from bottom to top. Uh, so we start at the very, very bottom, so the lowest point that it'll reach, and again, I'm using my y-axis to measure. Um, my lowest point that it'll reach is going to be 2, so I go ahead and start by saying 2. Next, I go all the way up to the top, and I measure that. So it looks like the top or the highest point that my line reaches it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and leave a, quite a bit of space. I'm going to go ahead and write the 7. All right, anytime that we're talking about range, we're talking about our y values. Uh, and this is how I write my ranges every single time, and it works every single time. Uh, so we start with the bottom. Then we go to the top. We leave quite a bit of space. We write down the letter that we're measuring with. So in this case, we're measuring with our y axis, so we want to go ahead and write y. And then my inequalities always point to the left. Um, whenever I teach this, I teach it with Beyonce, uh, which she has that song, uh, Irreplaceable, which she says, you know, to the left, to the left. Um, so my inequalities always point to the left. Um, and then I just basically want to ask myself, okay, can I equal the 2? Well, if I go to the 2, it's a solid circle, so yes, I can. So I draw the line underneath. Can I equal the 7? 
uh, well, when I go and I check the point, the highest point, again, it's shaded in, so yes, I can equal the 7, so I draw two lines, and there's my range. Negative 2 all the way, or sorry, ooh, and that should be a negative, I didn't even catch that. It should be negative 2 all the way to 7. Alright, we'll go to 65. The graphs at the right shows the total number of hot dogs that had been sold at the park each hour after the park opened. Based on this information in the graph, what is the approximate slope? Uh, so we're looking at slope. Um, so we basically can go ahead and connect our lines. And once we connect our, or sorry, connect our points, once we connect them, we can go ahead and start trying to do rise over run. So we just basically want to choose a point that's pretty close. Uh, so one of the points that's pretty close again to my crosshairs to the on the grid where they cross, I want a point that comes pretty close to that. Uh, so one of the points that's pretty close is going to be that one. And then I just want to choose another point that looks pretty close. Uh, well, what, Another point that I would say would be pretty close is going to be that one right there. So it really helps me out there right next to each other. Uh, next to figure out my slope, or to approximate my slope, I want to do rise over run. All right, so I want to go ahead and check my rise. How much do I increase or how much do I go up? Uh, so right now it looks like it's just one, um, but you have to go back over here and make sure. So actually I'm not jumping one. I'm going from 80 to 100, which means that I'm rising actually 20. So each box counts as 20. And again, you can see that we're counting by 20s on our y-axis. So even though that looks like a one, I'm actually increasing 20. And then I do my run. My run is going to be to the right. Again, both of these are positive, so up, that's going to be positive. And, whoops, to the right, that's also going to be positive. All right, and whenever I shift to the right one, it looks like, yeah, from 5 to 6, that is going to be just 1. Uh, so we have 20 over 1. Again, if I type that into my calculator, I would see that my slope is just simply 20. All right, we'll jump to 69. Change the following equation to slope intercept form. Uh, so right now we're in standard form. Standard form is ax plus by equals c. Uh, my slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Um, so to go from one form to the other, what we basically want to do is we want to go in, box in our y, move our our ax over and then divide by our b. Uh, so we're basically just trying to get the y by itself solving for y. Um, so as I do this I want to go ahead and draw my line down my equal sign. I want to box in my 3x so positive 3x or sorry 3y with positive 3y and now I want to get rid of anything else that isn't the y because remember at the end I want my y completely by itself. So I want to box that in that means that I don't touch it so I can cover it up um, I want to get rid of the 6x, or the negative 6x, so I would do the opposite sign, which is plus 6x. Alright, so positive 6x and, neg and negative 6x, those are going to cancel. And no x's are left over, every single thing, every single part of that cancels out. Um, so it's not the 6's cancel out and the x's are left over, this whole thing cancels out. Alright, and I have nothing left over there. Uh, this comes down, I haven't touched that yet. So we have 3y equal to, and on the other side, now I have 15 plus 6x. Um, again, hopefully by this point you know that these two things cannot be combined. One of them has an x, the other one doesn't. They're two completely different things. Um, so instead of say, instead of confusing myself and saying, how do I combine this whole thing, I just bring both things down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring my 6x down first. So we have 6x plus 15. So all I do is just bring both of those things down. I don't try to confuse myself. I don't try to do anything fancy. If they don't, you know, if they don't mix, then I just bring them both down. And I put them in line with each other. My next step is to get the y by itself. So I wanted to go in and divide everything by 3. If I divide 3y by 3, uh, the 3s go away. I'm left with just y. So my equation would be y equals uh, 6 divi 6x divided by 3. Again, you just do the coefficients. So 6 divided by 3 is going to give me 2, and I have to remember that there's an x, so that's going to be 2x. 
And then finally, 15 divided by 3, that'll give me a positive 5, so plus 5. So there's my equation solved for slope-intercept form. All right, 71. All right, 71. This has evaluate 2y divided by z plus 3x for x equals 5, y equals 8, and z equals 4. Uh, so it basically tells me what exactly I need to plug in for each letter. Um, I just have to make sure that I do it correctly and then that I follow PEMDAS, which is my order of operations. Uh, so I'll go ahead and talk about PEMDAS first. So hopefully at some point in your math career you've heard of PEMDAS. Uh, PEMDAS is your order of operations and the way that it works is this one goes first, then this one, these two are kind of together, and then these two are kind of together. Uh, so P stands for parentheses, so anytime that you see something like that, you want to do these first. So these take priority over everything else. E stands for exponents, so if you have like a little 2, like when we were working with x squared, or if you have something like 4 squared, you want to make sure that you take care of that second, so that second priority. Uh, third priority is multiplication or division, uh, so if you have multiplication or division, uh, those two kind of come together and those take number three. And then finally, addition and subtraction, those are last. In Again, in the priority. So as we work this problem, uh, priority-wise, it looks like division, so we'll do this step here first before we add the 3x. All right, so we'll go in and we'll start plugging stuff in. So we have 2 times my y. My y is 8, so I can replace y with 8 divided by uh, z, my z is negative 4, and then I have plus 3 times my x, my x is 5, sorry, yeah, 5. Alright, so again, following PEMDAS, my order of operations, I have to do multiplication and division first. Uh, actually, I have to do my parentheses first. Uh, since I do have two sets of parentheses, so we have 3 times 5, which is 15, so it would be plus 15. Uh, again, I haven't touched that yet, so I bring it down, so we have divided by 4, negative 4. And then 2 times 8, that would give me 16. So again, I take care of my parentheses first. Next is my exponents. I don't really have any exponents, so that step's done. Next, I want to do division, uh, so 16 divided by negative 4. Um, again, you may not be comfortable looking at it this way. You might be a little bit more comfortable looking at it this way. And that's how you would type it into your calculator, 16 divided by negative 4, uh, which would give me negative 4. So all of that together gives me negative 4. And then again, following my PEMDAS, my last step is to add. So to negative 4, I add 15. So negative 4 plus 15 gives me 9. And that's my solution. My solution is just simply 9. All right, 72, it says uh, the graph shown, is the graph shown a function? Uh, so function, uh, anytime that you have a graph, we do something called the vertical line test. The way the vertical line test works is you can either draw vertical lines through every single point, every single value, or you can just slide your pencil and remember a vertical line is going up and down. If at any point more than one point touches that line, uh, then it is not a function. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my point. So I would draw one line there, line there, line there, line there. Uh, and I keep going for every single one of my points. So far it is still a function. So far it hasn't touched anything more than once. Any, none of my lines have touched any of my points more than once. But then finally I get to the end and I see that this line touches that point and that point. So it touches two points at once. So we can simply go ahead and say that no, this is not a function based off of my vertical line test. All right, I think we'll do one more video where we solve or we attempt to solve the rest of these. Um, again, jumping around, and then I think I'll try to go back through tomorrow.